A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 25th Feb. On the front page you have Policeman among five killed in Delhi violence over Citizenship Amendment Act. So here now you can see in Delhi five people have been killed including one policeman. So vehicles, uh, shops etc have been set up place. This is in northeastern suburbs of Delhi. So here you can see a protester seen with a gun during the clashes. So here you can see we have been seeing Shine Bag protests going on peacefully and now in another region in Delhi we are seeing northeast Delhi violent protests going on. Then here you have Donald Trump calls Modi a true friend, lavishes praises on PM. So US President Donald Trump is on a visit to India. He visited the Taj Mahal and he spoke of how story of Indian nation is a tale of astounding progress, progress, a miracle of democracy. Then below you have Sunni Waqf Board accepts five acre land for us. So Uttar Pradesh Sunni Central Waqf Board has decided to accept the five acre of land allotted to it for building a mosque following the Supreme Court verdict in Babri Masjid Ram Jan Bhumi case. So Waqf Board chairperson met as such and accepted the five acre land. So it would also constitute a trust to construct a mosque at the site. Then here you have dissent are not anti-national, says Supreme Court Judge. So this is Supreme Court Judge Deepak Gupta who has made observations during a lecture organized by Supreme Court Bar Association on democracy and dissent. He says dissent is not anti-national. He says a party getting 51% mandate in polls doesn't mean the 49% must remain silent. And here you have Identify policemen who caned AMU students, Aligarh Muslim University students. So this is an incident which happened on 20, 15 December 2019 when protests were going on in AMU, AMU against the Citizenship Amendment Act and the police entered the library here and caned students too. So Allahabad High Court has now directed state government, means Uttar Pradesh government to compensate six students and identify policemen who caned the students. On page 5 you have center denies starvation death, cancellation of ration card. So the center has denied allegations of a starvation death in Jharkhand and arbitrary cancellation of nearly 3 crore ration cards of poor people across the country in the Supreme Court. It asserted that it was ready to prove them wrong. So the court said let it be put on affidavit. So the attorney general is going to respond to this. We submitted that the center would file a comprehensive affidavit on the issue and was waiting for replies of state governments which failed to file the same in compliance of notice issued to them on December 9, 2019. So this is in context of the starvation deaths, one specific one being of a 13-year-old girl who died of starvation in Jharkhand after she was denied ration on account of non-matching of Aadha details with her ration card. Then below you have NGT quashes UP government notice for opening wood based industries. So National Green Tribunal has quashed a notice issued by Uttar Pradesh government for establishing new wood based industries in the state. It observed that, that the precautionary principle should be followed and it quashed such an order. So it said, it said states should have make an inventory species wise and district wise and also have species wise consumption data for all wood based industries and their capacity to utilize them and not proceed with the present proposal till further exercise of making inventory and assessment of actual availability of timber or raw material is done. So this is the National Green Tribunal order. So 18 lakh cubic meter of timber that has been allotted for new wood based industry by the state level committee appears to be absurdly unrealistic. It wants an inventory being prepared first and then this allocation being done, which the court calls absurd. National Green Tribunal calls. Then below you have Trump sheltering Bhopal gas tragedy refugees. So these are protests going on in Bhopal. The Bhopal gas survivors are staging a protest saying Modi not standing with the nation, failing to question US government. Because the Bhopal gas tragedy which took place and the, the Union, Union Carbide industry was owned by 
Dow Chemicals Company of USA. So the owners are in US. On page six, you have Co Congress worked at questions in class twelve board exam. So in Manipur, Co Congress has reacted sharply to some questions in the political science paper in class twelve state board examination. Students in the exam were asked to draw the pole symbol for the ruling ruling BJP and analyze four negative traits of the approach of Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of the country, towards nation building. So, on page seven, you have water hose grip Latur supply down to once in fifteen days. So now civic body will pay power bills for one month to MSC DCL. So this is what uh, mayor has said, and BJP is staging protests with empty pots. So here people in Latur in Maharashtra facing water crisis despite a healthy monsoon in 2019. Officials admitted that supply to home taps is now once in 15 days, and situation worsening because of disconnection of the civic body's power supply due to non-payment of bills. So reason for water was beans. Mean bills are not paid, so water cannot be pumped. So that is that. Then on page eight you have sensitive information leaked by naval personnel, says NIA. So National Investigation Agency has said that thirteen naval personnel who were arrested on charges of espionage have reportedly leaked highly sensitive information to Pakistan intelligence operators. So NIA, uh, Naval Intelligence and Counterintelligence. Of Andhra Pradesh have arrested the sailors from different states and naval bases, and they found huge sums of money were transferred to the naval personnel, and who passed on the crucial information. Even bank officials have been questioned on why suspicious transactions were not flagged, and the concerned authorities alerted. So these thirteen sailors were being arrested. Then below you have. ASI Archaeological Survey of India planning barricade around famed stone chariot at Hampi. So, Archaeological Survey of India is contemplating installing a wooden barricade around the stone chariot inside Vithal Temple Complex, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site of Hampi. So, this is in Karnataka. So, it wants to protect the the architecture from vandalism. So, Vithal Temple is not only among the most visited protected monuments. At Hampi, but is also the most photographed. So art historians say that it reflects high degree of craftsmanship of the temple architecture that reached its zenith under the Vijayanagar rulers, who reigned from 14th to 17th century, who built this site. Then below you have Mahadai project cost zooms up 1,674%. So application to release reserve forest area is pending before the center, and the Kalsa Banduri Nala project on Mahadai River of Karnataka government, which is dragging on, has resulted you know, for the last 20 years has resulted in rise in the cost from 94 crores in 2000 to 1,677 crores now, and only a section of the project is nearing completion. And our work on both the reservoirs, Kalsa Banduri. Are yet to be taken up because forest clearance is awaited, and this is an unrelenting battle for gender equality. So this is Samira Jagirdar, who is now going to fight, take a fight for the rights of LGBT to the Medical Council of India, which has not yet recognized the need to restructure the MBBS curriculum, in which textbooks continue to criminalize a transgender or a homosexual or anyone who does not fall within the society's two gender sexual orientation. on the editorial page the first editorial is dual citizenship so this is regarding now a demand rising for dual citizenship to tamil refugees from sri lanka so we have seen how citizenship amendment act calls for citizenship to uh, to illegal immigrants from adjoining countries of bangladesh afghanistan and pakistan but tamil refugees from sri lanka are not covered because they are residents of sri lanka and citizens of sri lanka but now the demand is this ill advised demand which has come is for dual citizenship to them means they will remain citizens of sri lanka but should be given indian citizenship too so this is that then the second editorial is challengers challenge so this is regarding us presidential elections which are due in november 2020 so the, the potential candidates 
are actually contest among themselves first. So there are primaries, primaries and caucuses which are held in which the democratic candidate finally emerges out, one democratic candidate and one republican candidate would then be contesting the presidential elections. So here you can see this uh, editorial talks about various uh, candidates and how they, how Bernie Sanders, one of the Democrats, needs to widen his support base without compromising on principles to fight again Donald Trump, which is most likely be, to be the Republican candidate for the presidential election. Then on, then the lead article is the unassailable keywords for the judiciary. So this article talks about how Indians judges must remind themselves constantly of the need to uphold an independent, strong and respected judiciary. So this is in the context of recent comments made by Justice Arun Mishra publicly praising the president, Prime Minister on the public forum. So this has raised serious questions about the independence of the judiciary. Then below you have the issues around data localization. So this is regarding how local data storage clause, uh, no, clauses in the revised personal data protection bill needs re-examination. So the issue is around data localization only. So this personal data protection bill 2019 has been uh, introduced in the winter session of the Lok Sabha. So the bill refers to a, has been referred to a joint parliamentary committee for now. So here you can see the key provisions in this bill and the contentious provisions are highlighted. So, it is data protection bill. It seeks to give individuals greater control over how their personal data is collected, stored and used. So, there are some flaws which are highlighted in this uh, article. It says uh, that, that it the bill has attracted criticism on various grounds such as exceptions created for the state, for the government, the limited checks imposed on state surveillance and regarding various deficiencies in the structures and processes in the proposed bill. So data localization issue is one of them. So it is data localization means the restrictions on cross-border trans cross transfer of data. So like there will be a need to seek permission for transfer or an imposition of tax for foreign transfer of data etc. So means data should be physically located within the country. But transfer of personal data outside India within the subcategory of sensitive personal data have, as such has been enabled in the bill with the, pro, with the provision that it should be mirrored in the country. That is, a copy has to be kept in the country as such. Too. So, this data processing entities will be barred from transferring critical personal data as such outside the country. So, this, these provisions have been changed from the earlier version of the draft bill which was released by Justice Sri Krishna Committee in 2018. Because 2018 draft of the Justice Sri Krishna Committee imposed most, most stringent measures that required both personal and sensitive personal data to be mirrored in the country, subject to different conditions. But now this new provisions in the new bill have been made, made liberalized. So this is there. So this has been welcomed by businesses, businesses and users. It will reduce the cost for businesses to mirroring the data, etc. Then on OPEC page, you have a US strategy only meant to isolate China. So, this article talks about the Indo Pacific strategy of USA. So, US and India would be coming together on that. So, this article says that India would be advised to study the Indo Pacific strategy instead of jumping into it eagerly. And this is guns, gas, and technology. So, this article talks about uh, US-India relations. It talks about while President Trump is in India on a two-day trip, the goal of $500 billion in two-way trade looks within sight. So, we are buying guns from USA, we are buying gas from USA as well as technology. So, partnerships in technology are also in place. Then this article is not fair, just or reasonable. So, preventive detention laws practically sacrifice due process interests at the altar of crime control. So, this is being spoken of about how preventive detention is being used to detain prominent political leaders in Jammu and Kashmir in the name of crime control. On page 13, you have most feared military equipment on offer. 
defense deals worth three billion dollars are to be signed today between India and US. This includes 24 MH-60R multi-role helicopters for the Navy, six AH-64E Apache attack helicopters for the Army, and other big ticket uh, deals are also in the pipeline, like for uh, like uh, armed drones in the air defense system, as such, uh, naval guns, and six more PATI long-range maritime patrol aircraft, etc. Then on international page, there's no important news. Now again same coronavirus related news and political development you can skip this on business page again this is regarding how stocks have been affected due to coronavirus scare this is banks profitability remains fragile so this is rpi governor shakti khan das who has said uh, uh, spoken on banks profitability he also says telecom sector poses a challenge because of the stress in the sector plus this demand for adjusted gross revenues agrs which supreme court has ruled on so overhang of non-performing assets remain relatively high. So that is it. These are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website asia.com. Thank you.